Hear ye, hear ye, gather round for another edition of Young Kings Wrestling featuring the JDF Memorial Summer Soundboard. As always, you can find us on most platforms streaming your favorite podcast episodes, including Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. If you're listening on the iTunes, leave us a review of the five-star kind. Links to all the platforms and merchandise available at ykwrestling.com. And make sure you subscribe to the YouTube as well at YK Wrestling. Or you can search Young Kings Wrestling on YouTube. Got some uh, got some content that uh try to try to aim for weekly content, maybe a couple times a week. Yeah, we're gonna ramp it up. How long we've been doing this? Four years next month. Four years next month, we've been feeding the streets on a weekly basis. Hmm. That's crazy. Welcome to the Nuck If You Buckingham Palace. As always, I am the thespian T.C. Fontaine, a.k.a. T.C.F. Baby. Please say the baby. Joined by King Reek, House of Havoc, first of his name. We here. Yeah. We back. And, uh, you know, if, if you listened to this before, and for some reason, if you didn't listen last week, uh, Sovereign Soundboard. Sovereign Soundboard is on vacation. It is now the Summer Soundboard. Uh, therefore... Uh, that sound that you heard, y'all know the sound. It's the JDF Memorial Sovereign Soundboard sound. That's the Dragon Zord from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Y'all know that. Did y'all know that? Y'all should. Y'all should know that. But yeah, uh, Sovereign Soundboard, he hit me up like two days ago. And I was like, hey, fam, I'm going to need that. I'm going to need that Dragon Zord flute for my vacation. So I got to give it back. So uh, summer soundboard is uh, we officially gonna have an actual summer soundboard. We're gonna have an actual summer sound okay. next week. Okay. Clear that up. Shout out to a Fourth of July weekend though. Oh yeah. Niggas have not celebrated in three years. That's a fact. We really haven't celebrated Fourth of July since uh, since the pandemic. Hmm. All that, all that shit happened, and they started to pacify us with Juneteenth. Ass. We, we kind of stopped after that. We were going to celebrate this racist country. Right. The only thing I'm celebrating is the... The day off? Nine days I'm going to have off work, because it just oh, happened to coincide. Because I get a week off, and this just happened to coincide with 4th of July. So uh, Nice. I'm kicking up all week long. I'm, I'm going to get on my drink chance. Give it up for nine days off, goddammit. <laughs> hey, we uh this episode 201. So last week we had our 200th episode, and players fuck up. I forgot to say thank you to the people that helped us along the way. Right. You know, I was yeah. I was excited, so I forgot. So shout out to all the content creators who have rocked with us for the last four years. And uh, and even the ones that even if you haven't been on here, you you rock with us and supported us in some type of way along the way. And I'm definitely going to miss some names here, so please do not be upset that I forgot yeah. y'all. Uh, first of all, shout out to J Land on the beat. Very first yeah. thing you hear when you listen to our episodes is a J Land beat. First thing you hear on all of, all these podcasts. Yeah, all all of our all of our crews. Like, <laughs> so shout out to Hill. Shout out to Smacking It Raw. Smacked Raw, Sheely Showcase, Get Your Podcast, Marks with Mikes, The Las Vegas Wrestling Scene, Wrestling Wind Down, Public Enemies, Know the Ropes. Shout out to y'all. And then even the wrestlers and, you know, the various other personalities who have joined us as a, as a guest on the show for either an interview or just came to chill, man. Reese the Beast, uh, Culture Inc., the Pope Elijah Burke, that was our that was our original OG. And he he put us on game, 
you know, off the record too. So nice. it, we definitely Thanks, took man. that game into consideration. Uh, mm-hmm. Coach Tyler of the Las Vegas Aces, shout out to my guy, my Aces. Well, we sixteen and one, fifteen and one on the Damn. season. Average twenty point, twenty point margins. So shout out to Coach Tyler, getting it done out there. Uh, EC three, shout out to EC three, gave us a drop just randomly on a random Saturday afternoon, gave us a drop. <laughs> That's what's up. Appreciate it. Versus pro wrestling, my guy Beast. Uh, Shay, everybody at Versus Pro Wrestling, shout out to y'all. Uh, Santana Jackson, Juicy for now, the best super heavyweight in wrestling. Uh, I forgot to shout out to Bama Dave as well when I talked about the content creators. He definitely didn't, didn't rock with us, had us on how many times? Uh, I lost count on the, the different shows, Hot and Cold. and Yeah, uh, just between us, it had to be like 10. Yeah. Yeah, like together, right. I want to say like four. Yeah, we've been on there a lot. Uh, other personalities, man: Chris Bournet, Luke Gallows. Uh, I think I got everybody that's been on here as wrestlers. We need some more wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, we do. And, and shout out to the ones we started trying to book and hadn't been able to book as well. So maybe we can get y'all on here eventually at some point in time. Was this close to getting New Jack, man? Man, this close this to getting close. New Jack before. Uh, I don't know where New Jack at right now in the afterlife. Um, yeah, we ain't, we ain't gonna speculate. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to New Jack. Uh, damn. Who else, man? What other wrestlers? Yeah, it's uh, Karrion Cross. Shout out to Karrion Cross, man. He was like one of the first wrestlers to like really like follow us on uh, on social media. This was back when he was in Vegas, and then uh, you know we got sniped on Instagram, so he don't follow yeah. us no more. Because he got he got uh, an influx of followers when he became a nationally known name. Uh, but Solo Sokoa do follow us on Twitter. So shout out to Solo. Shout okay. out to the Bloodline. I check every now and again to see, you know, because I'll be like, man, that's a trophy for me that, that a Bloodline member follow us. Right. So, <laughs> every now and again, I go check, see if he still, if he still be following you boys. So that's what's up. All the other wrestlers that followed us, uh, Big Vito. Shout out to uh, Trish Stratus. She she blew our page up before on Instagram. The old old the old IG. Yeah, man. Yeah, she she helped before blow she, that one up initially. So before the assassination. That's my, yeah, that's my goat, and, and that's not the reason she my goat. She was my goat before that, and she really solidified herself when she helped us blow up. So, what other wrestlers mess with us? Wes Lee. That was the first wrestler to ever interact with us. In Young oh, King's okay. wrestling history. Oh, okay. Back when he was Desmond Xavier in TNA. That's what's up. I'm trying to think of everybody else. I can't. So I'm going to just move on. Shout out to y'all. I appreciate everybody for uh, 200 episodes. What did what did Jay Les say? Another 3,000? 3,000? 3, I don't know about that, Playboy. Listen, man. <laughs> They're going to start cutting some checks for all that. Right. <laughs> Somebody like, yeah, getting paid and no problem. Like Stephen A. Smith did three thousand first take episodes. Yeah, by now. Yeah. Just because Stephen A. did three thousand first take episodes, twenty people lost their jobs the other day. Oh man! At what point do we start calling Mickey Mouse a broke ass nigga? <laughs> I mean, we getting close. Yeah, we we getting a lot closer because. Uh... It ain't been looking good lately. Nah, they, and they do this frequently too. Like when Disneyland people off, we we, we got to start having conversations. Yeah, and they laid off some big names though. Yeah. All that means yeah. is, uh, you know, Disney, ESPN. Y'all can be broke all y'all want, but if y'all want to slide us a check, right? Man, we talk about you know make your wrestling show. How you how your wrestling show? I'm sure yeah, Pat McAfee had Pat McAfee do a wrestling show on ESPN. He might need some co-hosts. I'm just saying, Playboy. Real talk. Yeah, y'all know y'all know who that. You know what I'm saying? I could be I could be censored. You know yeah, saying? y'all got Pat McAfee. Got to be censored. We can do it too. So that's good. really why they laid everybody off. They had to pay Pat. Oh, I'm about to say like that was. 
that was probably the catalyst right there. <laughs> they cut him some crazy money. Man, they about to be working him like a slave. Look, Charles Barkley said, you ain't going to work me like no slave. Uh, I mean, big business. Got me on ESPN, real. ESPN2, ESPN Deporte. Yeah, man. Big business in general just getting a little crazy. Cause, man, uh, everywhere. Because my, you know, I, I work for UPS, and I don't know if y'all heard the chirping, but they got union people getting ready to go on strike because they ain't getting Man. enough money. <laughs> and they already got the writer strike. Like, bro, I be trying to look for shit to just audition for. Shit slow. Yeah. When I tell you shit slow because it's writer strike, it is slow. Mm-hmm. And they talking about the actors might have a strike coming up too. Oh. oh. TV about to be trash. Tell you, man, they slowing everything up. Yeah, man. Got some other stuff, some other business stuff. I gotta get off my chest too. That's been on some BS, but y'all know how that goes. Yeah, I'll pack an egg. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait on it. RP yeah. to draws. Darren draws golf, aka puke. He's gonna puke, man. <laughs> Tragic, uh, tragic career. Former uh, Denver Bronco. Forgot about that. That's mm-hmm. why I was, I was confused. I seen Adam Schefter tweeting about it. I was like, that was oh yeah, he played, he played in the NFL. Uh, so RP to draws. Uh, the kids we got any? We don't really got no kids. I, I look at the I look at the analytics, and most of our listeners are in our age range, so y'all know who draws is. Uh, right. but if you don't know who draws is. Uh, again, former Denver Bronco. Tried out for the WWF, got signed as puke uh, because uh, he could he could puke on command. He could make himself throw up on command. Ugh. And uh, that that movie Beyond the Mat, it's on YouTube if you haven't seen it. But it's a it's a big documentary about the uh, backstage goings of the WWE, like the late Attitude Era, not the late Attitude Era, but like the early Attitude Era rather, late nineties mm. around then. So yeah. uh, it shows like draws having his initial meeting with Vince and he tells him like you know special talent I can puke on command and so Vince is just in the office like egging him on like ah he's gonna puke he's gonna puke until he puked and then it was like a big thing he got signed because he knew how to puke on command it's crazy yes (laughs) if that right there didn't tell you that Vince is a complete psycho then oh yeah he's right what more new? What more proof you needed than that? <laughs> hey, Vince McMahon. Sorry, it's t- this is a sick Negro. There we go. To say the least. Yeah, uh, but yeah, Draws man uh, didn't really get much going in his career. Had a had a freak accident. Luckily, it wasn't televised, so they got that. Uh, they got that videotape locked away, just like the Owen tape. Yeah, never seen big ass do not open label on top of it. So, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a freak accident in a match with D'Lo Brown. Uh, D'Lo Brown accidentally drops him right on his head, uh, becomes a quadriplegic for uh, the rest of his life. Quadriplegic, if you don't know, you have access to none of your limbs. Quadriplegic that's four things you one, two, your hands and arms. Three, four, your legs. You can't walk either. So, oh, that that's been killing D-Lo. Man, Anytime I come bet. up in conversation, he just yeah. We seen the uh the dark side of the ring, and he didn't yeah. want to talk about it then. Yeah, and so I, I hope uh we praying for D-Lo's mental in this mm-hmm. moment because yeah, I think you know this. You hear like uh somebody you you called a friend and a, a coworker passes away, and it probably triggered like damn them flashbacks yeah i could have he could have been so much more he had a lot of potential and he never got to live it out so uh we're praying for for d and we're praying for draws and his family yeah. and uh rp d was in the building for owen too wasn't he he probably was because i remember him talking about that like you done seen some shit man i seen a i don't know if y'all watched Excuse me. I don't know if y'all watched Jeff Jerry on Broken Skull. He talked about Owen. 
as well. Yeah. He talked about like he just got over Owen's death like three years ago. Yeah, because he had to go on next. He was the next person that they even cut to. Yeah, he they, had the, they he had literally interview. will Owen's body right past Jeff Jerry as he's doing a, a pre-tape for oh, his next match. Man. Craziness. You got to go out there with your best friend. Died literally right there in the ring. You got to take bumps right next to the spot he died. It's tough. Yeah, man. It's tough. It's crazy. RP to Owen. Jeff Jarrett Absolutely. should be in the Owen tournament. And this ain't I even mean, me being on my usual Jeff Jarrett spiel. Like, I think it's one of them things that it made sense. It would have been for a good story moment, even if it was just for like one match, like just to have him in there. You tell the story, you talk about, you know, how the Owen tournament is important to him. Probably yeah. won't be able to do that because I don't think Jeff's going to be around next year when they do the next Owen tournament. So, missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. I can see that. Yeah. I I wouldn't be mad at that. See, sometimes I'll be having, you know, good ideas for people I like. Shout out to Double J. Yeah. Double I mean, J. You can't win it. Up. No, yeah, you, you, should, you shouldn't win <laughs> it. Shouldn't win it. But, like, maybe, maybe get to the second round. Would y'all yeah. have been mad at that? I, I mean, I probably wouldn't trip. I got people. a lot of these Japanese dudes that I don't think nobody know about. Uh, most people don't, cause they don't. Like how they how are they affiliated it. with Owen Hart? Uh, I mean, they're not really. They just yeah, they just familiar with his work. <laughs> how many of them was familiar with his work? I mean, there's some, there's some OGs still around there. They they probably know some stuff. I did watch uh, in the Owen tournament. I watched Roger Strong and Samoa Joe. That was cool. Oh, see. I forgot I, Collision was on last night, but it wasn't really shit going on on the show. But see, this this, this is this is how far, this is how much progress we done made with almost exclusively white. I'm actually tight. I miss Collision. I was too. I looked at the clock. <laughs> no, I, I see some tweets about it, and I was like, "Damn, this shit should have been ninety minutes and gone by." I missed the whole show, so I was just like, "I go yeah, look for." I look. I'll look for the one match I did know I wanted to see, right? On YouTube later, so I did watch. Uh, I watched that. It was cool. Joe won. Made a made Roddy pass out to the Coquina Clutch. CM Punk was on commentary. Joe. Walks up the punk with a steel chair and a bunch of security like separate him. So I want to know like how that escalated. Uh, I guess I don't pay attention enough. Guess I should do my Googles like y'all suggest so everybody. Saying, like I, I know they got like history from ROH, but like yeah, but like why? Where all this heat come from? All of a sudden? yeah, now this is years later. <laughs> but yeah, threatened each other. So Joe was like. Since I can't fuck you up, I'm going to go fuck Roddy up some more. So he uh, hit a muscle buster on Roddy on top of the chair. Oh. <laughs> and they ran off. Damn. He's getting See, all kinds of crazy. Samoa Joe uh, doing some weird shit to, uh, to Falcon over on mm. Peacock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we ain't going to talk about that because yeah. uh, I don't know who at Peacock is responsible for the content they put out on social media, but y'all yeah, wild for that. Y'all, y'all didn't think y'all weren't using using the brain at all, because especially especially when it got especially to Twitter. Falcon. Yeah, like Good. Anthony Mackie, it's strike two for you, my boy. Strike <laughs> one was striking vipers on Black Mirror. Oh boy, yeah. Have you seen that? I have not. Okay, but good. I know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's strike one this strike two like you're supposed to be captain america now right you can't you can't you can't be looking looking like this you can't be going outside you wildin fam <laughs> i'm gonna check that twisted metal out though so. yeah yeah I, I, outside of that like it do look kind of dope so i'll be with it for sure and uh what else we what else we got on here man uh i'm gonna i'm gonna go to this week in wrestling history that's what, I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do next. Cause this week in wrestling history, 1976. Are we taking it all the way back? Wow. 
This was uh, three years after the New York Knicks last championship. Hmm. Just had to throw that shot out there. Uh, Antonio well, Inoki. I know, the, I know the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Antonio Inoki versus Muhammad Ali, a boxer versus wrestler match. Oh. Damn. It was it was a it was probably a spectacle back then. Watching it now, that shit was trash. They weren't doing nothing. Oh no. Nah. Antonio Noki was on his back the entire time, just throwing kicks at Ali. And Ali was just like bobbing and weaving the whole match. It was really about the spectacle and about like, wow, we got Antonio Noki and Muhammad Ali in the same ring together. Yeah. Yeah, the match wasn't nothing like. I've seen like, better boxer versus wrestler matches since then. Like Floyd and Big Show was, was that was way better. That, that was yeah, that was hell better. And that yeah, was people to this. Those are the day people act like they don't understand the concept of sports entertainment. It's like that's how far back it goes. Right. Like it wasn't WWE, but the concept was there, and, and <clears throat> it's like it, it, it's worth watching for multiple people at the end of the day. That's how we got to. You know, nowadays the Logan Pauls and Bad Bunnies and all all of that. Logan Paul, Bad Bunny, and uh, they actually know what they're doing. Like right. they, they in here killing it, and they big superstars. Like we had, like literally had Floyd Mayweather at WrestleMania, yeah. taking bumps. Like that was crazy. Yeah, he was working his ass off. Hard work, dedication. While while he was still active, mind you, was he still active? Did he retire think, like right think, after that? I think he I think he had a couple more um no, no, this was this was oh eight yeah he still he still was because I think he was only like he retired 30. after he fake retired after Hatton, didn't he? Yeah, that was that was that one. But like he was only at like 38, 39 and 0 at that time. Yeah. Maybe 40. Cause I thought they was gonna count I don't know why I thought they was gonna count the big show match towards his record. Nah, nah. <laughs> Cause they did on commentary like uh, was it on SmackDown? Was it SmackDown or Raw? Can't remember. Uh, I don't even remember. Well, whoever whoever was on commentary, they they was like thirty nine and oh or forty, you know, one of them. I was like, right. oh, it counted. I was excited, and then yeah, it didn't count. <laughs> it should have. I mean. I, I, but back then, I thought that I thought it was gonna count too, cause they were saying like you can't win by uh, you can win by knockout. I'm like, oh, so they gonna try they gonna try to add this notch on his belt yeah. when he knock him out clean. So, all right, here's what happened. Uh, he was retired during that. It was the Hatton fight. He had the Hatton fight, and then he retired undefeated. Oh, so this this was the fake retirement. Yeah. So yeah, he was he wasn't active at this time, but yeah, he was he was still in shape and everything. Okay. You know, he came back after the Hatton fight, fought Big Show, and then fought uh, JMM in 09. Ooh. So he, he was off for, he was off for about two years, actually. So the Big Show should have been 40 and 0. Damn. Yeah. But let's move on with that, man. Uh, 1998, The Undertaker versus Mankind, Hell in a Cell. Classic. Man. You Mick watched Foley that. Uh, should have died in that. I'm going to say, you watched that, that YouTube with them watching it back? It's on my watch later. Watching. It's on my watch oh. later, so I'm going to check yeah, it out. I was watching that last night. Uh, that was at King of the Ring in 98. Also, same night, uh, Stone Cold lost his world title, the WWF title to Kane in a first blood match. Because how the fuck Kane going to bleed? Uh, next night, though, Stone Cold won it back. So Kane was only world champ for 24 hours. Crazy. <laughs> Didn't win another championship till 2010. Damn. Oh, years. I'm going to yeah, talk after, about that, too. After that run in 03, it was like, you thought you would have gave him something. Bro, I thought he was going to win, like, 02 at no mercy. That That's too. when they should have won it. Right. We ain't going to talk about that. Mm, reign of terror i do want to talk about kane uh in 2010 a little bit though so hold that one uh 1999 this week uh another another stone cold and undertaker tidbit 
on Monday Night Raw, Stone Cold defeated The Undertaker to win the WWF title. And uh, this is, uh, which I'm pretty sure hasn't been changed since then, the most watched wrestling match in history. Nine million really? people tuned in to watch this match. Damn. Crazy. 2001, uh, we had uh, the first ever WCW match on WWF television. Booker T and Buff Bagwell on Monday Night Raw. Oh, my God, it was ass. Wow. Damn look shame, at him, bro. Look at him. Straight up trash. Buff Bagwell basically got fired on TV this night. Like, they literally threw his ass out the building, mm. and you never saw him ever again. Like, you got to, you got to get up out of here. You got to get it out. We got lucky to see Booker T still. Yeah. That's because Booker T has something that they could work with. Like Buff, Buff Bagwell showed up. He he wasn't in shape. He'd been off TV like three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they was like, let me get this nigga out of here, man. Kurt Angle, Stone Cold literally threw them out the building. Like, you got to get this six-pack of ass out of my building, bro. Yeah. Uh, 2002. This, this. All of our favorite matches uh, right here. Undertaker, Jeff Hardy for the undisputed title on Raw in a ladder match. Mm. This uh, should have solidified Jeff at the time. But uh, as is per tradition, Jeff Hardy just, he's hes his own op. Man, the amount, the amount of times that he done got in his own way like it, it, it's to the point that if people wanted to argue his credentials as a singles competitor as a Hall of Famer, you could. Yeah. Because the plans that they had for him, that he messed up because of his own stuff, it, it probably would have boosted boosted that a little bit more. But like you said, just uh, self sabotage going on. I'm. Man, he really his own op. Like, who else been his own op for real? Like, it's to the point. Oh, you know, it really hit that home too. And I forgot to bring it up. I was watching. I watched Night of Champions, twenty two thousand nine, and him and Punk. Him and Punk was that main event. Yeah. Before that match, though, like in the middle of the show, Punk went out in the crowd, and he just cut this promo. He was talking to me like, "All right, yeah, yeah, raise your hands." If you're you're a fan of Jeff Hardy and stuff like that, he's like, and he just went off. He's like, I don't blame you, I blame your parents. I, I blame the that. parents because y'all y'all the ones raising your kids to to be Jeff Hardy fans, knowing what he does, knowing how he acts, and all, like, I felt some like, type of way because I was a Jeff Hardy fan back then. So right, I was, ew, I was a fan of both CM Punk and Jeff Hardy, so it was like, yeah, I uh, and I I. I ain't gonna lie, I was heavy on like the straight ass shit back then. So like I was heavy on that. All my friends in school be skipping school to go smoke weed at this church across the street from school. Not me. I stayed in class. Yeah. I was straight edge. I was I was a CM Punk guy back then. So but it hurt me to he said that about Jeff Hardy. I was like, damn, I yeah. like both y'all, man. <laughs> it's cold blooded, but I watched it back now. I'm like <sighs> It was on something. Ain't, ain't nothing new. Ain't nothing. <laughs> Thanks, man. Shout out to Jeff though, man. Uh oh four. You still in 04? Uh yeah, yeah. Early. Uh, what is it? Going into bad blood. Okay, so you ain't bad that great American before. bash yet. No, uh, not yet. Oh four, great American bash this week. JBL defeated Eddie Guerrero for the WWE championship. And they uh was it Texas Bull Rope Four Corners match? Yeah. Yeah. Had me hot as a kid. That thing had me hot. <laughs> oh, JBL. Man. JBL knew how to get heat, man. Man, that, bro, still to this day, that finish be having me hot. <laughs> oh, you can't tell me Eddie ain't touched that shit first. Uh, on that same show, though, we had the Concrete Crypt match. Undertaker versus the Dudley Boys. And the Dudley Boys won. Paul Bearer will be buried in a crypt of concrete. Oh my God. And Undertaker won. And uh he he did it anyway. He was like, yo, I gotta bury you anyway. That might be the worst finish to a pay-per-view I've ever seen. That's the worst main event of any pay-per-view of all time. Like 
And I watched Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton in the Punjabi prison. Right. <laughs> Where Great Khali just randomly showed up and then nothing happened yeah. after that. And that like, still wasn't as bad as this. Like, even when I go watch it back, like, the, the whole thing, you had the pre tape shit with Paul Bear, like, interjected with the match. Mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine what it looked like live. They're lucky that cell phones weren't really a big thing back then. Man. On Twitter with Twitter with Twitter they ass up. Man. Yeah, that was it terrible. Would, it would not have been okay. That was terrible. Uh literally though, one year to the day after JBL won the WWE title, he won the SmackDown championship. All SmackDown in the six way match. SmackDown championship. And then after he won, hold on a minute, player. <laughs> Teddy Long came out and was like, hey, fam, we don't even need this no more. We got Batista from Raw, and he the world champion. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take this back to my office, player. I was hot about that. I, I wanted to see if y'all actually what? made a belt for this. <laughs> I still want to know what the belt looked like to this day. I was mad as hell, bro. Yeah. Like, come on, son. How you going to hype this up for a good, what was it, like two weeks? They it was doing a few this. weeks, fam. And he even brought the when, belt out, too. That's, like, that's what you, I'm saying. Why'd you bring the belt out if you know you're not going to show nobody this month? That's like, it's not like, don't bring this bag out here as if you about to open it up, hand it to him, and then just say, ah, it's all good. We got a world champion that you can face now. You want the right to face him. And we just going to forget we don't had this conversation. Is it really a number one contenders match, player? Uh, JBL, JBL, you had the money to sue him. I think you had grounds to sue him. You probably signed a contract for the SmackDown Championship and all that. Yeah. That's a lawsuit right there. That's what I'm, I'm saying. A, I'm going to go bring that up to JBL on Twitter. Like, hey, you, you should probably see about, uh, you know, suing. Yeah. For damages for this. Cause oh. this because this says that if I win, I am the champion. Facts. And you just you just flip the rules on me real quick. That that's the case as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, we should see about that. Talk 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 to old tongue. Yeah. Jared McDevitt, he's still there? He retired yet? I think I think he did. I want to say he did. See, you got a better case of Jared McDevitt not there. But I mean, you, you know Vince is keeping him like on retainer. To, yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, he need to be my consultant. I was say after last year, you know, you might want to keep him around for a bit. <laughs> like, hold on, I need you to you to stretch it out a few more years if you can. Yeah. Uh, one last thing on uh this week, man. 2011 pipe bomb promo was this week oh, in Las man. Vegas, of all places. Our uh, our third man who never shows up, he was there in the building. <laughs> no, he. I thought he was coming this week. I, I, did he reply to the did he reply to the message? I, I, I didn't even see it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Damn. He must he must have got busy. Yeah. He legit be busy though. We ain't gonna we ain't gonna throw too much craziness. Yeah, I, I, we, we like we like to have some fun with it, but uh yeah. my guy is working, so I can't be mad at it's it. It's confirmed. Yeah. We got his literal video proof on his Instagram. Mm-hmm. That's why we still doing a uh, Zoom. That's true. We still doing Zoom. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but 2011 pipe bomb promo. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, that shit low key ruined wrestling <laughs> in the long run. Because you just got a whole bunch of people think they can replicate that, and it just no, you can't replicate it. Cause a lot of people, even CM Punk, try to replicate it. Like you can't, bro. Yeah, I, you can't. Like what made it work is because we didn't see it coming. Well, that and it's like they've made a lot of performers have just made this a genre of yeah. blurring the lines. You know, work shoot. You know, basing your real frustration on in, into this promo, like. That, that that's just become a common thing and of course you know almost exclusively white was doing it pretty much every week because we need more clicks with this new company that we just opened right. up so yeah it, I, I i see that from that standpoint it, it really kind of introduced some problems man don't you get tired of this shit because i do 
Right. I tune out. But I'll be like, oh. I, I will say, I will say, my attendance was shoddy going into that, and afterwards, I was, I was dialed in. So it was a double edged sword. Oh, listen, bro. Never in my life have I ordered a pay per view that wasn't WrestleMania <laughs> or the Rumble. Yeah. And money. This is second year of Money in the Bank, so it's still like a low level pay per view yeah. at that point. They had me ordering that pay per view. Mm hmm. I watched that main event with a bottle of Pepsi next to me. I don't even drink Pepsi, bro. <laughs> That's how much of a CM Punk guy I was, man. Yeah. And then he came out with the shirt. I ordered that shirt immediately. Mm-hmm. I went online and ordered that shirt immediately. I'll tell you, I was a big CM Punk guy back in the day. Things change. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday this past week, though. Uh, y'all remember Mark Jindrake? Oh, yeah. Happy birthday. Talk to about Drake. talk about the bag fumbling Hall of Fame. Man, but listen, <laughs> you know what's crazy though? And I might be getting them confused with Matt Morgan, actually. Um, I used to get them confused all the time. But now, no, I'm not. Mark Jindrake was that dude in Mexico, though. He went down to Mexico and was that dude in like CMLL. I did hear about that. I I forgot until, until you mentioned it. I, I definitely heard something about that back in the is a he changed his ring into Marco Corleone. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't think he wrestles anymore though. But uh, yeah, he he was that dude in CMLL for a good bit. He was like they world champ and everything. Yeah, he was putting yeah. in work. Yeah, you find your tribe to... somewhere, bro. You find your tribe somewhere. Say. Yeah, he had to make up for it. Yeah. He had to make up for fumbling that bag. Cause... Fumbling the evolution bag. Whew. man. <laughs> I couldn't live with myself. And I mean, like, he legit fumbled because they had they filmed him and then all the, the vignettes and everything. Right. Triple H was like, oh, we need Batista. Like, we can keep we can keep one of these guys, but you know, we gotta get uh can't have both uh, too much immaturity. Uh. But shout out to Mark Jen Drake, man. Uh Matt Stryker had a birthday this past week. Mm. Matt, Matt Stryker has one of my favorite stories of, of getting a job in wrestling. As a teacher. He was a teacher on the side. The yeah. only thing is the people at his teaching job didn't know that was his side hustle. <laughs> oh, they, man. They did not know. This man used to used to skip, skip school days to go wrestle. That's and crazy. They found out about it and fired him. That's what I remember hearing. I don't know if it's confirmed or not. I might have to go down a rabbit hole of Matt Stryker interviews to confirm that. I but that's what I remember hearing back in the day when he when he first came around in WWE. Mm-hmm. Was that, uh, that's that's that's, that's gangster. Actually, it is. It is because that's something we would all do. Hell yeah! Like fuck them kids, bro. If you talk, especially in middle school, if you saw me, yo, you could you could pull up and just do do a, a like a show or two a week and say say bump school. Man, I wasn't paying attention to school back then anyway. Thanks. <laughs> like, Thanks. Uh, who else we got here? I see uh, Kimberly had a birthday this past week. Uh, happy birthday to Heidenreich <laughs> this past week. Uh, mm-hmm. We just saying all the ruthless aggression guys: Mark Jendrake, Striker, Heidenreich. Alicia Fox had a birthday this past week, too. Alicia Fox and Cody Rhodes had a birthday on the same day, a year apart. So, happy birthday to Cody Rhodes, and happy birthday to Alicia Fox. Cody Cody just turned 30. I, didn't, I, had, I did not know he was the same. I feel like I feel like somebody was capping. I did not know he was the same. Cody Rhodes same. is 38. So, who lying on... Yeah. <laughs> Somebody lying because I seen he was talk, talking to interviews and stuff like that. And how that sound, say, bro? How Cody Rose that, just turned thirty and we just turned thirty and we. That's what I'm saying. So we was fifteen. I'm like, it ain't no way. It ain't no way. Cody Rose debuted in 2007. He's yo, not thirty. Yo, yo, come on, son. Y'all, 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 y'all just stupid. I'm, I'm stupid for for even considering that, but ah, uh, damn. Yeah, man, you you wildin'. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't make no damn sense. Hey, two weeks in a row. <laughs> My packing the edge, guess what? Guess what? 
<laughs> you gotta get for that. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Terry Funk. Uh, Happy birthday to Terry Funk. He is a. Uh, gotta do the math on this one. He's still kicking. He's still kicking. He is Sheesh. going to be eighty years old next year. If he makes it next year, he just turned oh, seventy nine. Mm. Crazy, bro. Thought he was up higher than that. Man, that's that's from all them years of all them bumps and all that shit. Oh man, this dude putting barbed wire in his eyes and shit. Yeah, boy, you tripping? <laughs> uh, Dax Harwood had a birthday this past week. Uh, Sue Young from Impact Wrestling. I, was, I don't know if she's still there or not. I haven't watched Impact though. Consistently oh, in a while. I was to say, you're going to be the only one that knows. Yes. <laughs> hey, we, we've established this. Uh, Bret Hart. Happy birthday to Bret Hart. That's my Bret Hart impression. Uh, sounds really close to my Vince McMahon impression. I got to work on it. I was about that. to say, I thought that was Vince. <laughs> I tried to get the Canadian in there a little bit. The... Bret Hart. I, no, never mind. I'm going to skip it. Uh, it's birthday today, though. Happy birthday to Bret Hart. Uh, happy birthday to uh, Lil Nate. His birthday today, too. Oh, man. Yeah, Lil Nate. My God. And uh, around in this segment out, we've been going on weight. We drag shit out a lot. I'm going to do better at that for the next 200. Yeah, we, we got a couple shows to recap. <laughs> facts. Uh, <laughs> big facts. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, Scotty Too Hotty had a birthday, too. So Turn it up. Shout out to Scotty Too Hotty. Yeah. And uh, we'll address the rumors. Let's get through this quick run this down um we already mentioned uh r.i.p draws uh so i i just came across this the other day and <clears throat> it don't make a lick of sense to me but uh teddy did an interview and he said he's not a john cena fan he's he's not cool with john cena he would not get details but uh they were talking about uh la Knight and john cena potentially having a match john cena play and, hey, dog. yeah and he was like listen uh it would be great for la Knight." You know, for be with the for him to work with a talent like that, but uh, I'm just not feeling John Cena player, uh, and uh, so like, none of that would be any of my any of my concern. So uh, yeah, Teddy Big Hayton, player Hayton, man, appropriately so. Sipping that's a hater age. Uh, Chris Hero, he everybody, man, he hate everybody. Yeah, yeah, now Chris Hero from uh, from NXT ROH. Uh, he's apparently producing Collision, or on on a trial basis anyway, as a as a producer and coach. Okay. Uh, Grayson Waller, y'all might notice, you know, he ain't been seeing him wrestle lately. Uh, he broke news that he broke a leg for real. Uh, I did see some pictures of him in a, a walking boot, but uh, last night he was walking just fine. But still, ain't seen him taking no bumps. So, yeah, according to him. He uh, I think at a live event, suffered that injury. That that kind of makes sense though, cause like before they would do the Grayson Waller effect and all that, like he'd be sitting down the whole time, like he would already be in a ring, mm-hmm. all that. So this is the first time we seen him actually do an entrance. So I guess it, it makes sense. They they hit it pretty well. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of injuries, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get to this a little bit later. Brian Danielson. Uh, had a clean break of his arm about 15 20 minutes into his match with Okada last Saturday, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot worse than they initially thought it was. But uh, I, I, alongside of that, uh, AEW had to make a lot of uh, adjustments creatively. Uh, we we noticed collision has been fire, you know, the first what two three weeks now. Part of the reason of that is because. My man's been back there working with creative back there. He's been a big part of the creative process. But uh, they also had plans for him to uh, work some TV TV matches a little bit more, a little more on-screen stuff. And he was supposed to be in the Blood and Guts match coming up with uh, combat, Blackpool Combat Club, the Elite, and everything like that. So, obviously, that's got to get changed up. Wasn't uh, that they the match last that... year? It was Elite and somebody, or Blackpool and somebody but I don't think it was against each other. Um, but yeah, that, and uh, they were looking towards all in in London. So all them plans are going out the window. They got to do some shuffle. But uh, yeah, 
a speedy recovery to to the man Brian Danielson. Um, Retired at a fire main event. <laughs> yeah, you probably should. You probably should. Stop it. Get some help. Please retire. We got back to back sound bites <laughs> to let you know. It's, it's not like it's not like the 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 product has gone down. It's not like we don't wa- enjoy watching the man wrestle, but unselfishly, you got to think about yourself and your family. You got two kids. You got a wife. You, you got two uh, kids. You got a toddler about to start preschool soon. Yeah. You married. You don't want to leave Bree as a single mom. And we don't want a repeat of uh of of, of sixteen years ago, yeah. either. Yeah, June twenty fifth. Mm-hmm. If you know, and you should know. Yeah, everybody you know. knows. Yeah. Um, and last thing I got, uh, Mercedes is hitting the big screen. Uh, this new movie called The Collective. She tweeted about it the other day. <laughs> uh, I just watched the trailer before I jumped on. Actually, uh, about a, a group of assassins. Um, targeting uh, some elite uh, socialites that are uh, part of some kind of trafficking ring or whatever. But uh, yeah, it stars Mercedes, uh, Ruby Rose, Tyrese, Don Johnson, oh. among others. So uh, I remember seeing that. Yeah, we got a got a pretty interesting cast here. But yeah, uh, she she's doing it all. She's doing it all right now. And uh, we we I mean this is something that we talked about. Back when she was uh, had walked out and had a conversation about what her next move should be, listen, stock price goes up. She done been a part of Disney programming. She done did the national championship opening. You know, going to Japan. You know, yesterday's price. We done yeah. said that. Shout and Bailey, ba- Bailey was doing media this week, and she says every opportunity she gets, she's been telling Mercedes to pop back over across the way. So, I mean, if it ever comes up in conversation again, we told y'all what it is already. Thanks. I can't find my sound bite right now. Oh, here it go. Hey, what yeah. you owe. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Damn right. Pay what you owe. Facts, man. That's all the rumors? Yeah, we good. Cool, man. Let me get into what we watching this past week. Uh, did not watch my takeover rewatch, uh, but I did uh, watch a, a couple non-wrestling things again with uh, my wrestling. Uh, had to watch some some old hood movies. Mm. And not just any hood movies. Hood movies produced by rappers. Okay. Uh, gotcha. You know, shit like Hot Boys and like, you know, I got mm-hmm. the hookup and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Rappers back then was just making their own movies and and releasing them, and they were kind of bad, but they were entertaining. <laughs> so I I found out about this. I did not know about. It. I ain't gonna lie. There was a movie with Mac Ten and Fat Joe called Thicker Than Water, and I was like, huh? let me watch that. So I, I went. To, it's on YouTube. If you ain't seen it. Uh, it's actually like. A few different uploads on YouTube actually of this movie. So I watched it and it's like Mac Ten, he he a part of the gang, he a part of one gang. Fat Joe is like the head of another gang, and they was beefing, and then they realized like Mac Ten and Fat Joe realized they they wanted to work together to make some money because they were struggling breaking into the music industry. Huh. So they try to break into the music industry, but still they they gangs are still beefing with each other. And then, you know, shit go down, and now they beefing. And then uh, the biggest twist, come to find out, Mac-10, his dad died in the movie. And, like, his mm. like throughout the movie, his mama was just like, your daddy's sick, you should, you know, make amends with him, yada, yada, yada. And he wasn't hearing that. His daddy left him when he was little and all that shit. You know how that go. Mm-hmm. Eventually, he just decides to go to the funeral. He gets to the funeral, Fat Joe at the funeral. And they're like, what the uh. fuck are you doing here? They was brothers at the end of it. Come on, man. <laughs> Mac 10 and Fat Joe don't look shit alike, but they was brothers in the movie. Right. You know, Fat Joe, he was saying nigga a lot. Of course. Big Pun was in the movie. What? Yeah, Big Pun was in the movie. Uh, who, who are the rap- 
uh, Crazy Bone and Flesh and Bone was in the movie for like three seconds. Oh, uh, y'all, you watch All Deaf Digital? I remember. Not like, not like back in the day, time. at least. Yeah, yeah. Like you remember from Roast Me, uh, Boo Capone? He was in Yo, that. Yo, what? Yeah, he was in that shit. Uh, what other rappers? It was mad rappers, and Ice Cube was in it. Dub C was in it. Damn. It was some ghetto. So, uh, all week I'm about to just watch nothing but movies produced by rappers. So, Jeez. I got the I got the East Siders on my list next. <laughs> oh, we we'll go watch that. We we'll go watch Hot Boys. Yeah, we just about to watch a bunch of hood rapper movies. I'm gonna definitely watch Hot Boys because I watched uh, Juvenile on Tiny Desk too. Mm. Uh, what you watched this past week? You got the list. Um, outside, I mean, I didn't really get back into 04 like that yet, but um, yeah, I had put on Night of Champions. I, I watched 08 like last week, then I saw 09, like I said, just a couple days ago. Um, I mean, it, th- this this was where it started kind of going downhill for me. I wasn't really feeling it like that, but mm-hmm. that bright spot was Jeff and CM Punk because I forgot he went and cut that promo in the middle of the show. Yeah, but uh, now nah, the main event was fire. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Jeff Hardy like finally won. Uh, no, 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 that was Summerslam. Okay, but yeah, that was the uh, Jeff finally won big gold outright with no cash ins. And Punk was trying to, Punk was trying to get DQs, trying to get counted out, and Teddy kept showing up like, "Hold on, I'm in the player. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you gonna you gonna get back in here, and you either gonna win this match or you gonna take this L." But yeah, no, nah, it, it was fire. Uh, another another occasion of Jeff, you know, doing it the right way this time, and you know, not getting in his own way and getting those moments that you know he didn't earn. Yeah. Didn't but, get it his way yet. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was on the way. It was on the way. But we got to enjoy the one night that he didn't become his own op. Yeah. So shout out to that. Uh I also, you know, did my money in the bank rewatch. So I watched uh 2010, watched Kane cash in. And uh, I'm about to go run back that Kane run on SmackDown in twenty ten because I remember enjoying it when it was happening. Yeah. I'm I'm just scared to to do that, and then the rest of the show probably was ass, and I'm just gonna watch nothing but ass for however long. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna watch Kane's run until he loses the belt. So the, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now. Not that long ago, I watched his uh, the cell match that they had. That's a, that's a chore, bro. That's a chore. Which one? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold you. Uh, Twenty ten. Yeah, so Taker. Taker. Yeah. That's that crazy. A, I swear that SummerSlam match was good. The well, nah, they they had the match at um it was Night of Champions and then Hell in a Cell, then Bragging Rights. Now I didn't watch Night of Champions. I think Night of Champions was better, but that was no holds barred. Okay, one of the matches I remember was good. Yeah, it might have been that one. Because Hell in a Cell was not it. Taker came back at SummerSlam, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was right after the the punk match. Or no, that was that was the year before. Um, the match Kane had Kane had the match with Ray. And yeah, he showed up in the casket. Um, but yeah, no, the I think Night of, Night of Champions was the probably the match that that was fire. I gotta run that one back. But yeah. Hell in a Cell, nah, which is disappointing because Taker don't really have bad cell matches. Nah, uh, he had one with Punk, didn't he? Oh well, yeah that that was that was his punishment. Cause yeah, that was that, ass. Yeah, that because because it was just like yo, just go out there and whoop his ass. You got ten minutes, right? <laughs> that, that, that's really all it was. Yeah, but uh, yeah, twenty ten money in the bank. I watched that. Kane won it. I was looking at the money in the bank actual match, and and Cody, the only one, has never been world champion. Damn, really? Even Matt Hardy had the ECW title. Wow. Like it's Kane, Big Show, Christian, Cody, Dolph, Drew, Kofi, and Matt Hardy. It's crazy. Uh, but yeah, elsewhere, I didn't really pay attention to the show after that. Like I had a had an idea in my head. I was going to turn it off after Kane cashed in, and I did. Uh, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't really watch that. Uh, I watched 2016 as well. And uh, that shit was, it was cool. Um, I got, I got a little bit of slight beef though with 2016. 
because watching it back, I I see what y'all was talking about at the time. 2016 WWE was uh the writing team was bad, fam. Yeah. The writers yeah, were horrible. Like I'm watching, <laughs> so we kick it off. It was a uh, what was the first match of 2016? I think it was the money in the bank. The men, uh no, they didn't have a they didn't have the men and women's yet. So they just had one money in the bank match because they only had I'm tripping. I can't remember now. I literally just watched it a couple of days ago. Let me go look at it. Yeah, it was it was one money in the bank ladder match. Mm-hmm. Uh Dean Ambrose, that's the one he won. Yeah. It was uh Berto Dario, Cesaro, Jericho, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. So uh disregard that for the time being. But I watched the show and uh Enzo and Cass were the first people out for they had a tag title match. And they cut this promo. I was like, damn, this promo kind of bad. <laughs> and then the new day came out and they cut a promo. And Big E was like, man, we heard all that booty chatter that y'all was talking. Booty chatter line was funny. Mm-hmm. But I was like, dang, New Day, I kind of see what some fans were talking about. They they promo was kind of corny back in the day. Oh, yeah. Before, before you know, they, they let them kind of take the reins, creative control of their own gimmick. Yeah, which was around this time. So, like, that's why it wasn't that bad. It was just like, y'all, y'all doing a little too much, though. Right. Uh, I could see there was some assistance from some writers there because backstage, like shortly after this match, it's uh, Kevin Owens and it's Chris Jericho and Alberto Del Rio. And uh, I want to say it was like one other person. I think it might have been Sammy. And it was just back there just going on for the longest. I'm like, bro, wrap this shit up. <sighs> I was like, these writers were bad back then, bro. I can't believe it. I see what y'all was talking about. But uh, elsewhere on the show, man, we had a uh, shout out to the lone wolf, Baron Corbin, coming back. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, Baron Corbin, Dolph Ziggler was on that joint. Uh, I forgot Charlotte and Dana Brooke were a team for a very short period. Uh, they beat Becky Lynch and Natty. And then uh, Natty beat the shit out of Becky Lynch. And I think this was the catalyst for... Uh, the SmackDown Women's Championship, if I'm not mistaken. I think, yeah, yeah, because it was just like two months after this. Yeah. Uh, Apollo Crews, I think he had his pay per view debut on the show, beat Sheamus. Mm. You forget Sheamus uh, won the money in the bank the year before this. So it was a pretty big win for him. And then uh, the first AJ Styles and John Cena matchup, where uh, the club beat up John Cena. Beat up John Cena. Dean Ambrose won the uh, Money in the Bank and then uh, cashed in on Seth Rollins, who had beat Roman Reigns. Clean as a All members of the Shield held the WWE title in a uh, five-minute span at one point in time. Can we be honest with, 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 with each other about, about something? And I, I'm directing this to all of y'all listening and all of y'all on the Discord. Can we be honest? Dean Ambrose as WWE champion did not hit. No, that shit was ass. Like, let's just, I, I just, I want to, I want to just go on record saying that so that we clear the air and there's no confusion. It, oh, yeah. it did not hit. It was ass. Like It did the, not hit at all. The the moment, of course, was fire. Um, yeah. But after that, it was like, you remember that damn interview he did with Stone Cold? Yeah. He, like, yo, he was getting was on his nerves. One of the reasons why it was ass, because like, this dude has a championship. Now he got to do champion duties and now he just got an attitude about it. Right. So I'm saying, man, like it, it was not it was not it. And the, the worst Cole part is like, you got to give me something, Dean. God damn. Yeah. 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 He was getting on his nerves because it's like, yo, like that was the shoot. What, what are you here for? <laughs> you just you just you just got this. And you like, just, you're the champion, for God's sakes. Oh, man. Like it, it was just bad. And the worst part is, is that like the commentary team was trying to damn to put him over like. The coldest shit ever was uh, Morrow calling him the kingpin of SmackDown Live. Like, he don't deserve that name. Nah. He ain't do nothing to deserve it. Nah. But they was trying. They was trying to put him over. But I, it didn't hit, bro. Nah. It did not hit. Uh, I forgot to I'm mention. I'm not sorry. Yeah, I'm not sorry. Either. I was rooting for Dolph at SummerSlam that year. Hmm. It's true. 
I mean, that's my dog. You know what I'm saying? And he he might have been the only one going for Dolph. Look, 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 look. That that I, I stay consistent. That's been my dog. You know what I'm saying? Dolph, Dolph's he, my dog too, but damn, I wasn't going for him over Dean back he, then. He had he had a he had a pretty solid SummerSlam record going into that year. He so did. I, I was leaning towards that. But yeah, no, nah, I, I I was not with it. I was not with it. Uh, I forgot to mention also on Money in the Bank 2016, they had Rusev beat the shit out of Titus. That's racist? It's mad random. I don't even think it was promoted. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But uh, we also did watch Money in the Bank yesterday, too. So let's get into these grades real quick. We can we can keep it looking at the time. We got a little bit, a little bit of time left before we go. A little bit longer than I wanted to, so let's get through this. <laughs> uh, I was only wrong about one match uh, on our predictions last week. That was a women's money in the bank, and that was mm-hmm. really just a, a narrative pick. So, yeah, if I was a, uh, I was going with my official pick. I would have would have clean slated this whole show. So, I have. oh man, let's talk about Oof. it. Uh, let's talk about it. The men's money in the bank. Uh, Big DP, Damian Priest. <laughs> <laughs> Senor Dinero. Uh, I forgot how to say bank in Spanish. My bad. A banco. Banco. Yeah. Senor Dinero and Banco. Something like that. Yeah. My, <laughs> I'm a load of Duolingo when we get off. Don't, <laughs> don't fret. <laughs> don't fret. <laughs> uh, I gave this one an A. Plus. It's a great way to get it started, man. You got to get it started just like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Logan Paul got jumped at the start. And he got jumped like another point in this match, too. So that's what you're supposed to do. You, you ain't qualified for this. Man. We all qualified for this match. You just about to say. declare we're going to jump your way. We ain't going to let you win. The fuck out of here. Like, you knew what time it was. Yeah. But as per the, the tradition of Logan Paul at these big events, he was in his bag <laughs> again. He was. Get that frog splash on the DP. Man. And the ladder did not break. It didn't. So I, that hurt like hell. I no. know it did. It had to. Uh, Butch, when he pulled out a cricket bat. <laughs> you got to know what a crumpet is to understand cricket. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, Ricochet had a highlight reel on both ends. Like he was cooking Man. and getting his ass cooked at the same time. That's Almost in him and Logan Paul's life on that Spanish fly. He didn't get enough. Man. I stepped back on that one. Like, yeah, I, was I, like, just, I, I just watched Logan's head and I'm like, yo. Yeah, yeah, it was about this close. I think they were, close. they was trying to like go from the ladder and go straight into the Spanish fly off the top, but they had yeah. to stop and arrange it. But man, y'all yeah, talk about narrowly avoiding disaster. Facts. Uh, yeah, but Ricochet, he was in his bag. He had a tope through the ladder on the outside of the ring. He tripped. Uh, he tripped. This was low key a tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs match. If you know, you know. Yeah, all the, all of them, all of them was involved. Like I didn't see as many chairs, but we definitely seen the tables. Stairs were used a few times, and obviously a ladder was used. Mm-hmm. Yeah, DP, big DP, got the dub. Uh, LA Knight, he lost. That was, that was right? well, this is my thing. I'm not mad, I'm not mad, I'm um, not either. Cause, I'm gonna cause let free- you say what you got to say because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go on a little mini rant. <laughs> yeah, no, like I, I'm not mad because of who went, like, Priest deserved it. Yeah, he definitely earned it, especially this year. He he been he been turned up this year, so I'm not mad because of him because of him winning it. Um, I'm just like when you when you listen to crowd responses at, at this one, I, there's only one uh, reaction crowd reaction that got louder than this, and we'll talk about it. Uh, he had he had them on every whim, every move he hit, every time he got in the ring, like they was just. The decibels was up, so I I was really thinking like, damn, they was just you might as well just do what makes sense. But I mean, the match was solid, so I can't trip off that. Um, 
and you know we just advancing the story here i don't know what how much story you really have if la Knight were to win oh uh, that's you don't just, have that's anything just, yeah that was i would have just been fan service so that that's another reason why it's like i can understand it because you know the, the dissension with judgment day him and finn if la Knight wins it it's like okay he's walking around he's a fan favorite and he's got this but narratively speaking you didn't have a lot to work with there so i get it yeah like I seen, you know, I ain't gonna call out no names, but it's somebody who I respect a lot in the content creator circle. Very big name, interviews a lot of people. Uh, he said the match was terrible. Well, he said he said the match was good. He said the ending was terrible, and it's really only because L.A. Knight lost because this guy has interviewed L.A. Knight a few times. Uh, I'm just saying, like you can't just say the ma- the ending was terrible because the guy y'all wanted to win didn't Wait, win. He, he said that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, you know he, what? he was becoming one of them niggas in, in that moment. But, but you know what? He's on my shit list this week anyway, because you see he interviewed... Uh, oh, Bush yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah, so this week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, <laughs> he's big on my shit list now, because I was rocking with him, too. Bro. Until this week. I was like, ooh, when I saw re- that. <laughs> Yo, I was, I was cool with him. And then I saw that this week, like... Why are you giving him a platform, now. family? Uh, you catch, you catch but it now. Uh, he outside of them, like he, you know, I, I rocks with bro, but I just I did not rock with that I did opinion. Too. Yeah, like I, mm. I, I didn't like that opinion because like I look at it with from from the perspective of Priest, like you said with L.A. Night, it would just would have been fan service because like outside of that, where do you go with that? It's yeah. Austin Theory. Okay. No, beat Austin Theory any Friday. It don't matter. Like he don't need a briefcase for that. And I promise you, I better not see DP cashing in on no mid card champion. Y'all better stop this this, this narrative Please. about any championship. That's not what it's supposed to be. That Please. was never what it was, what it was supposed to be. I and I don't know why we keep doing that. Hey, like, do I got to write a letter to you, Paul? I'm gonna call you Paul. Like or doing that letter. Yeah, the whole thing with Austin Theory last year was just y'all just fixing up a, a, a messy situation in the midst yeah. of a transition, like. This shouldn't be a thing. Yeah. But but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he would have just cashed in on Theory. You know he's not going to cash in on Gunther because Gunther not on the hell. other show. You know he's not yeah. going to cash in on Seth because Seth is on the other show. And we all know he's not going to cash in on Roman because why would he interject himself into that? Right. So, like, that's all it would have been. He just would have cashed in on Theory. He can, he can go and just walk up to Theory backstage and be like, start trolling him and – he yeah. give him a match. Like, it's that simple. And, and they honestly should do it at this point because they're starting to get a little cold. Yeah, like, we want to make the the the, the mid-card championships important, and we're doing that with the Intercontinental title. Like, yeah. that's important as hell. The U.S. title ain't really did shit with it with Theory. So, like, why not? If that's if that's a objective of the company is to make these championships important, then why is it such a, a detriment that L.A. Knight not getting a world title shot? Yeah. When he can win that one and do just as fine with it. hmm I say y'all I couldn't shut it. up. Y'all couldn't shut the fuck up about the match that Damian Priest had with Bad Bunny a few months ago. Like, after that match, it was like, oh, he deserved a main event push. Now he carried Bad Bunny to a fantastic match. Mm-hmm. That was just two months ago. Yeah. If that. Like, Damian Priest, he's been a hot commodity since he came up from NXT, especially yeah. last year since he's been in the Judgment Day. He's been incredible. Hell yeah. So when he finally starts to get his main event push, the story has been really just telling itself for the last few months with Damian Priest. All of a sudden y'all have a problem with it when he finally gets that push. That's crazy to me. Yeah. Whereas like LA Knight, he's had the worst match of the year so far. That Mountain Dew shit at the Rumble. Oh, why we got we don't gotta talk about that. Like that, <laughs> that, was, that shit was terrible. Like that uh, almost ruined LA Knight for me. So he mm-hmm. like, LA Knight is really just lucky that the crowds just came along with him because like between whatever Vince had him doing last year and then that damn Mountain Mountain Dew shit with Bray Wyatt, that whole feud really should have soured a lot of people on LA Knight, but it didn't. But he really only started getting hot like two, three weeks before Mania. Am yeah, I right about there? So right, right about there. We're comparing a guy that's been one of the hottest acts over the last year 
versus a guy that just started getting hot in like March. And it's just nonstop bitching and complaining. And you know what? I thought I was going to enjoy seeing y'all bitching and complaining when he lost because I knew he wasn't going to win that damn ladder match. But now it's just it's just sad at this point. It's just sad. Shut the fuck. <laughs> Please, for the love of God. Yeah, we gotta let it go. We gotta let it go. Get put. Listen, end end the misery. You put the U.S. title on him. It elevates the title because he has it. Yeah. And you just you just keep letting him grow from there. Like we don't gotta rush this shit. I mean, y'all can do it on Friday, bro. Tuesday yeah. is is Independence Day. Y'all can do it on on Friday. Have a Independence gimmick match, whatever. For the U.S. title, U.S. title open challenge, something like that. Yeah, it's simple. That, that'll be smart. Open challenge. Yeah, y'all overcomplicate shit too much, and y'all just want things handed to you, and you don't want to wait and let things play out. Yes, I said let things play out. I haven't said it in a while. <laughs> I haven't said that in a while. But y'all got to trust. Y'all got to trust these things, man. It's a new yeah. regime who have shown the the care about what they're doing. A lot more than than the previous one did. So, let's give him a chance, bro. Yeah. What grade are you giving this? Uh, uh, this is A for me. A, A plus for me. Uh, next up, uh, for the women's tag team championships, Liv Morgan and Raquel. Damn it! What is her name? Raquel Rodriguez. Yeah. Uh, defeat Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. I didn't watch a second of this match, but it's getting A plus 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 for me. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is. Well, because Shada Baszler turns on Ronda Rousey mid match, start beating the shit out of her. She Amen. had them Amanda Nunez flashbacks. Uh, Amen. Like I said, I didn't watch a second of this match until Michael Cole was like, What the hell? And I look up and I see Shayna beating the shit out of Ronda. I'm like, Ooh, yes, I did my Dr. Umar. Ooh, <laughs> how oh, you feel? Man. Yeah, that that. I'm I'm the same way, A plus. Like it, the match wasn't even bad. I mean, I wasn't into it. I was watching, but I wasn't into it. And then at this when, when Ronda hit that blind tag and you seen Shayna's face, I'm like, okay, so this is gonna happen at the end of the match. They gonna like they gonna have some kind of the little argument or whatever. Yeah, I should have paid attention, is what you're saying. Yeah. But she immediately came back and just went upside her head. I'm like, oh, let's go. <laughs> like she didn't even she didn't even wait. Like Rhonda's starting to pull up on Liv. You know, she doing that whole that, that stupid shit that she be doing with her arms and shit. And then all of a sudden, it's got a clock on on sight. And she just let her have it. I'm like, man, couldn't have happened sooner. Couldn't have happened yeah. to a nicer, nicer woman. I tell that's you. What, that's what Cole said. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't he for once he ain't lying. He yeah. not capping. I can't I can't oh. be mad. And and, and this, this, listen, we just need to go and take this and run with it all the way, because oh, yeah. y'all know I have been on, since I showed up on the show, I've been, I've been grieving about how they've been treating Shayna since she got the main roster. Fix it. Go yeah. back to the, I, I got, I got the old NAC right. shirt on right now. Yeah, out there throwing up the rock. Yeah, I, I need, I need that back. And we can start at SummerSlam. Y'all know what time it is. Oh yeah, fight pig. Oh, listen, if this is, if this is anything but a cage, I ain't watching it. I'm sorry. Woo! Fight pit. Fight Y'all know fit. what to do. Let's do it. Cage fighters in a cage, man. Y'all know what to do. Yeah, rice itself, man. Uh, next up for the Intercontinental Championship, uh, Gunther versus Matt Riddle. Uh, I'm going to get this an A+. Plus. Uh, they weren't going to have a bad match, man. Uh, this is a first match they've had since 2018, one-on-one. And that was, uh, I think, in PWG. Yeah. I was so, going to say, it was either that or Evolve. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Matt Riddle got to be in a doghouse, something serious, still. He must still be on punishment. <laughs> yeah, he said, All right, just because you came back, don't mean you ain't about to, you know, I'm about to say he got like 20 seconds of offense and <laughs> he was getting cooked. For real, oh, for yeah, real. He, he got his ass cooked. Hold on, yeah. we, we we got that. We got that for you. Hold on, we got that. he was getting. He got his ass he cooked. Getting... He got cooked. Hey, you didn't go down like that, huh? He got cooked. But it's it's a Gunther match, so I gotta give it an A plus, man. Uh, but you know, uh, back in April, you know, I went and made dinner, and uh, I had some leftovers, so I put it in the freezer. 
Yeah. I went, I went back into the freezer after this match and got my leftover lasagna out the freezer and warmed that bitch back up in the air fryer. Let's Threw go. McIntyre. Let's go. Aim back, baby. Mm. Big Pop in the UK. That's where he's from. You know, he's from Scotland, but it's still the UK. Came out. Uh, should Drew beat Gunther for the IC title? Is, is that something we're going to see? Or... Man. Is he there to put Gunther over too? Man. How close are we to him setting the record? Uh, let's see. Let's Google it. Because I know he ain't far at this point. It's Googleable. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on Wikipedia. We got we to gotta check it. got to check it. Cause that's gonna factor into it. We got a, we got a month until SummerSlam. Yeah, a month and three days. So let's see here: WWE Intercontinental Championship. How long, Honky Tonk Man held it, yo? The internet be slow sometimes. I'm sorry, yo. Honky Tonk Man held it 454 days. So, mm. how long has Gunther had it? He's had it over a year for sure. Yeah, I'm about to say it's it's been a hot minute. We're doing live research on air. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, this this is important important info. We got yeah. streets got to know. Gunther is at three eighty five. Mm. As of today, and Honky is four fifty four. Damn. So do my math. Uh, 454 yes. minus 385 carry to one. That's about 69 days. So about uh about two months and some change. Yeah. Uh, I mean, listen, it would it wouldn't hurt at all to to give it to Drew, and you know the leftover design you would just keep heating up. But um, yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen until um. Until he set the record, I think that's going that's going to be the first order of the agenda. Yeah, and then it's on the final boss territory because once he give up that title, you, we already know what time it is. Seth, count your he fucking take, days. <laughs> yo, he taking the game over. Yeah, big facts. That's what I want to see, man. And uh, next up, I got a question for you, Reek. <laughs> How many royal families are there in wrestling? So I heard Street said the wrestling has more than one royal family. Talk to him. We had two of them showcased here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next match, Cody Rhodes beats Dominic Mysterio. Uh, This is actually, if there's such a thing as the worst match on the show, this probably was it. Uh, Yeah. I'm going to give it a B, though, because it wasn't nothing special. It was was Cody, and uh, he did his thing. Dom isn't bad. You know, he's, he's not just wow. anything spectacular, though. Uh, I thought we were going to see Brock show up. So I yeah. picked Cody to win before. Like I said, it's 4th of July weekend. And uh, the American oh. Nightmare is not losing on the 4th of the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's, it's not, not happening. happening. It's not. But I thought we would see Brock show up in some capacity. Uh, he did not. We might see Brock on Monday. Uh, I hope so, cause uh, yeah. Cody and Dom need to move on after this. Uh, both. Yeah, and th- this this goes back to this goes back to what I said about Dom. By the way, I, I forgot last batch. Um, I'm giving that a B plus. As okay. good as Gunther is, it just like I've seen them have better matches. I mean, I I, um, I guess I did that to put y'all over. I gave it an A plus because Riddle got cooked. Well, yeah, that I, I mean I that, that's for true y'all. too. That's true too. That is true. <laughs> that is true. I'm always gonna be happy about that. Um. Uh, but yeah, no, this goes back to what I said about Dom and uh, as a heel. Like, he's that he's that chicken shit heel. Like, he's mm-hmm. that, you know, some cheap heat and he's going to run away from the grind heel, which is fine. Like, if that if that's if that's the, the territory that you win, you win it. But I don't know if that's sustainable for him. Um, and this, this match wasn't even bad. I, I, I'm, I'm giving it a B too, but it's just like with what we was getting everywhere else, it's like this was just the 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 least bit of fire on this 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 the flames. You know what I'm saying? Like it's cool just, down match. Yeah, that that's really what it was. Honestly, like it was that that break period in between all the craziness because we was about to turn back up right after this. Facts. <laughs> so yeah, uh, 
What grade you get this one? B. B? Yeah, B's all around. So uh, I think they ran some video packages and whatnot. And uh, I don't know what's about to happen. But then next thing I hear. John Cena showed up. Uh, and I, I was like, no, John Cena not here. <laughs> sure as hell, it was John Cena. It might have been AI. Why <laughs> John Cena? It was John Cena uh, nonetheless. I popped. I stood up the whole time. Uh, I, I lost my shit. Like, I'm like, oh, what? Y'all, every what? time Cena show up. Oh, uh, no. No warning. <laughs> I guess that's the thing that John Cena do now. He just randomly show up at Money in the Bank. Yeah. He did that two years ago. <laughs> could have did it oh. last year, John. I'm just saying you could have did it. Caught us slipping. It, happy accident. He just happened to be over there filming a movie. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. But it's like still it wasn't planned. He just was like, yo, I'm here. Let's uh let's have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Uh came out there and randomly teased WrestleMania in London. Don't piss me off. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all can go to uh, London. I wouldn't mind. It'd probably be fire. It'd probably be dope. Yeah. Don't go I, there for Vegas, bro. Come on. I'm now. about to say, I heard I heard him say London, and I'm like, yo, that would be crazy as hell. I'd love to go back to London. That's all the more reason to go back. But then I thought about my guy over here, and I'm like, yeah, he ain't going to be happy about that part. <laughs> Just come here. Y'all can go to London. Just come here first, bro. Like I'm trying to get it. I could have sworn we was going to get the WrestleMania that so far I got. That was yeah. supposed to be ours. Yeah. And, you know, Tampa, they had to push Tampa back another year, which pushed everything. They went to Dallas. I thought it was going to be Tampa, Vegas, and then L.A. Yeah. No, no, I thought it was going to be Tampa, L.A., and then Vegas. That's what I thought. And they didn't do it. But now they're talking about London for WrestleMania. Yeah, I don't know why y'all scared. <laughs> like, come it's on, now. It, it sounds it sounds like y'all scared to go out there for some reason, and I don't know why. Like just book. I know the stadium ain't booked that far ahead, and if it might, it might be actually. I think about it. It might be booked I mean, that far in advance. I mean, it, it, I mean, it very well could be. I wouldn't be surprised. But at least tell me something, mean. God. Dang. And, and and like like, like you know what, what Triple H say. You know they have their. They have the uh the biddings every year. Is, is Vegas bidding? I would think so. Like, I could have swore y'all got some money during SummerSlam. Cause, cause if they not bidding, then that's another conversation we gotta have. <laughs> I don't know good. why they wouldn't be. I might I might have to write somebody. So I'm just saying, uh, whoever I think it's I think it's the county. I might have to write the county. Clark County, y'all about to get a letter from me tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be a nice request letter. Like, I would like to see WrestleMania. Please, uh, WrestleMania. Right. But, uh, yeah, tease WrestleMania in London. Uh, but then your boy Grayson Waller come out there. He's like, we don't want to have it in London. We want to have it in Australia. No, we don't. John Cena's like, man, I'm just trying yeah, to talk yeah. to my friends out here, bro. Like, Which, You know what that's from? I I seen people referencing it. I don't know where it's from. Though. So and th- this this is technically something news, happened like last I, I was, week. Yeah, I, I I didn't put it on news, but um somebody pulled up on him with you know one of you niggas, and oh. uh, he was out you know having lunch or whatever with his people, and Dave just pulled up on him asking to do the whole you can't see me shit, and he's like, can I just enjoy some time with my friends? Right. And I was like, ah, right. I was like, okay, I'm sorry, we'll leave, leave you alone. But yeah, that that was the thing. That was the, the wink wink to that that whole situation. John Cena's funny. Uh yeah. Attitude adjustment to Grayson Waller. Like, get out of here, man. Yeah, we we're not we're not doing media in Australia. We're not going to the land of Satan's pets. It's not going down. Yeah, we can't do that. Cause what time will WrestleMania be on? I have to wake up at like seven in the morning to watch WrestleMania. Yeah. I ain't about to do all that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like I'll do I'll do three PM. That's fine, cause you know, that just means what I get by 7 p.m. will be done on two, on two nights. That's cool. I can go do something the rest of the night. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I won't I have to end my that. night with mania. Like, I'll do that. But 7 a.m. Nah. That's nah. why I don't want it in London, because like 
I don't want to like I don't mind this type of show. I wouldn't even mind SummerSlam in London. Like I don't want WrestleMania in London, fam. They, sh- they should do that, honestly. SummerSlam in London, that makes sense. I don't want to watch WrestleMania in the morning. I'm on the West yeah. Coast. Yeah, I don't I don't either. WrestleMania be over with at three o'clock. What am I supposed to do with the rest of my day? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, nah, bro. That's that's a little bit deep. I'm not I'm not I'm not co-signing that one. Vegas, we need it first. And then y'all can decide to go to London. And then where else should they go after that? Uh I mean, they've really they've been branching everywhere. I'm surprised um, they ain't went to Minnesota yet. At the Viking yeah. Stadium. That's well, been open they, enough. They 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 threw in a bid. Um I think the same year as Philly. Okay. So they they they've been bidding. And Minnesota gonna get one before we do. That's tough. Yeah. I mean they could do they could do Nashville again. Um, don't get Nashville that for, for another for event before us. Well, I'm saying after. Okay. Yeah, after they could they still do, they to, still ain't been back to Canada yet. That's true. That's that, crazy. Oh man, if I see if I see one more Vancouver for WrestleMania sign of the exact same font and color and everything like that. Same person. It's probably the same sign they bring every show. Yeah, man. They they dedicated because I've been seeing that sign for at least five or six years now. That's what I'm gonna start doing. I'm gonna start bringing a Vegas for Mania sign. There you go. I'm gonna just go travel. Next time they somewhere close, I'm going. I'm gonna right. go. If it's for if for a PLE, I'm going. And, and make and make sure to tell them if they're not bidding, better start bidding. Yeah. Because they they hindering progress. Yeah, yeah, this my agendas. I don't like when my agendas get interrupted. That's what I'm saying. Right. Next up, uh, EO Sky wins the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Uh, I'm going to give this one an A-plus as well. I uh, love the finish with the handcuffs mm. and uh, literally climbing over the previous generation. That's storytelling. The cinema. Man, so that's some Scorsese stuff, right? There. I'm telling you, producers were showing their ass on tonight. Yeah, on this card, I know who it was too. It's the usual suspects. Mm-hmm. It had to have been the usual suspects. Yeah. TJ, Molly, Jason Jordan, one of y'all or all of y'all had to be. Uh, yeah, Trish Stratus taking ladder bumps at age 48, Ooh. 49. Man, love it. The year, the the what is the. I mean, it's really the rock bottom. They all got these different names for it, but that's yeah. really what it was off that ladder. Man. First of all, first of all, first of all, mm. Patricia, we need to have a conversation because <laughs> Lord have mercy. Mm. Hey. Man, I gotta find it. I gotta find what I'm looking for. It's 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 one of them situations where you know how we fit. Look, Doc, you're gonna have to mind your business because She's just one of those people that's in that category. I I, I don't know. What it feels so good. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, Doc, Dr. Umar just going to mind his goddamn business. I think Dr. Umar would be like, oh, yo. Hey, yo. I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you take a good look, I, well, you can't, you, you can't, but you can't hold your agenda but so much yeah. with certain people. That's all I'm saying. I seen you at Cherry Hill Mall. Oh yeah, <laughs> we, we so we let you off the hook. You got you beat the case that time, but I know what I seen, man. Yeah. Uh, what else we have in this match though? We had a Zelina hit a cold red off the ladder. Man. EO hit a moon salt off the ladder. Y'all was just going crazy, huh? Oh my god. She said she said Pete hit a moon salt, so I gotta top it. Yeah. And. Got the elevation on that joint. I was going nuts, man. What grade are you giving this? Oh, super, super A plus. Super. Double A plus. Okay. Okay, yeah. okay. And this is just who I picked to win. This is probably like one of two or three predictions I got right on this card anyway. So that gets A plus by itself. For sure, for sure. Uh next match, uh Seth freaking Rollins versus Finn Balor for the world heavyweight title. Uh, I missed a good chunk of this match. I ain't going to lie. So I got to run it back. So uh, I'm giving it an incomplete for now. Probably, probably bump that up A-ish around there because it was like background noise for me. So it sounded like they was going yeah. crazy. I did see a uh, big DP 
came down there with the briefcase. You know what I'm saying? Had had yeah. Finn Balor feeling some type of way. Oh yeah. Gonna be some uh, Mufasa and Scar energy on Monday. Very similar oh. to the women. Cause I know the women gonna be on that bullshit too. Oh, most you know, of them. Bailey over there hating. Yeah. Yeah, now Seth, Seth and Finn was cooking. Uh it was it was really what you expected from the two of them. Just a lot more with, with, with you know, some some chip on his shoulder from Finn. Them stomps was had a little extra extra stank on them. But um, yeah, no, the big thing about it was that that little tease from Damien. Cause you know that's gonna start a whole thing on Monday, but uh yeah Seth, Seth going over no cash in, and him and him and Damien was just going at it afterwards. Cause he's like yo what you doing fam? Like you done you done messed this up. I had seven I got seven years invested in this. You done messed me up. Like he was letting Priest hear it. You know what I'm saying? So tomorrow we gonna have to we gonna have to have a talk. You know oh yeah, what I'm saying I'm ready. And then uh, in our main event, man, you already know what it is. The Bloodline Civil War. Mm. The Usos, the ones from the womb to the tomb, mm. defeat their cousin and little baby brother. A plus, 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 because it got Roman Reigns in it. Automatic A. Yeah, automatic A plus, 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 plus. And then some more plus, 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 pluses. For Jay Uso pinning Roman Reigns. Whew. COVID oh. didn't exist the last time Roman Reigns got pinned one, two, three in the middle of that ring. And oh, they had me with I, the false finishes like they always do. Of course. I thought Roman was gonna stack them. Yo. And then, like, I was like, no, Solo will come in there and take the pin. Like I said right. last week. Mm-hmm. But now nah, Roman took the pin, and I was like, "Oh, they, they, they did it this soon." I thought I'm Roman, thinking, I thought Roman was gonna take his first pin whenever he lose the belt. Right, right. I was about to say that, yeah, because oh man, and they, they, they play with you too, because they, yeah. they, they. If you've been watching the story from the very beginning, all them callbacks, the stacking them and pinning them, they did a whole, they did a spike spear combo, and I'm that like, was yeah, crazy. It's I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't even get mad if you take a pin from that. But Jay kicks out of that, like, bro. Oh uh, man, what's next in this story, bro? Listen, you know what's next, man. We all know what's next. I, I would, I hope I find. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna start binging the show. I'm gonna gotta, I'm gonna find the clip when I said it way back in like 2021, right around like November. Jay is Jay is getting his shot, man. Jay got to get his shot. I know people are gonna say, "Oh, Solo should be the one to go face." It. Listen, if you really think about it, Solo, just short of a year, he hasn't he hasn't really been featured in any pro- like he's had matches, but it hasn't been him featured in any real programs yet. He's just been standing by Roman and the whole bloodline, but mainly just by Roman. He's been that like secret weapon, so. Yeah, I could see, you know, the reason for putting him in that position, but it's not time for that yet. Yeah. Like we still gotta, we still gotta really build him to that point. Jay has been the focal point of this program or this story from all the way from the very beginning. It's always come back to him, and for him to be the one to get that first win, that basically makes him a contender right then and there. Like yes. that's a statement. Like I pinned you. After what it like three and a half years, a thousand plus some days, I'm getting the title shot. SummerSlam, Jay Roman, you know what to do. You know what to do. You know what to do. It writes itself, as we as we like to say on here. Continue comes, my prophecy. It itself. Continue my prophecy. And that was Money in the Bank. Uh, where are you putting this up against uh, some past Money in the Bank pay per views? Oh man. Um, I'm put honestly, it's right underneath 2011. Okay. Because okay. 2011 is kind of like, I don't want to say the standard, but it's like, it's ideally what you would want this show to be. Yeah. Because even outside of like the main event, you you also, you had uh, Dave Bryan won the money in the bank. Um, Del Rio to me was a miss, but the rest of the show was pretty dope too. 
Um, so that's the way it, it like it matches out. Um, but that also you got to factor in the hot crowd too. Like if this crowd was better, but I think the show overall in 2011 had more like intrigue and stuff like that. There was a lot of uncertainty, especially like what's going to happen with punk not signing his contract and stuff. Like you had people hanging a lot on that. Um, but yeah, that plus the crowds, um, they're like right here together. Mm -hmm. Both those two shows. Uh, I'm biased. So I'm going to definitely put last year's as number one, because I was there and I had a great time. I've seen I, I've never seen anybody say anything bad about this show until like two days ago. Um, all of a sudden, people didn't like last year's Money in the Bank. So y'all just change up. Daniel Bryan was right about y'all. Y'all fickle. Fickle. Because I like the show. It, even if I didn't go, I would have enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, the theory shit, I don't know how yeah. it would have played out if I was just at the crib watching. But in the arena... Oh, that was incredible. Like, I've never I've never heard anybody get so much heat before in my life. Mm-hmm. It was awesome, bro. Like, <laughs> this shit was hard. I loved it. Yeah. And then Barry Corbin showed up, beat the shit out of Pat McAfee at the end of it. Nobody knew what was <laughs> going on. Right. I think I was like, I was on edge because like some shit had happened on the floor. I've talked about this. Like some shit was happening on the floor during the main event. Mm-hmm. Or like right before the main event with some fans. And so I'm thinking like, some fans is just tripping again. And I look closer. It's Baron Corbin just beating Pat McAfee ass. <laughs> I was like, that's hard. If Pat McAfee was at UFC like an hour later with a neck brace on. Right. It was ill, man. So y'all, y'all kind of wilding. Y'all kind of wilding, low key. I always understand the excitement. Yeah, so that was a good show. And then uh, last year, uh, this year was good. 2011, solid. Uh, I kind of low-key liked 2019 when Bailey cashed in. Oh, yeah. And then Brock won. I liked liked it. It was good. It was good. Watching watching everybody go – Meltdown Twitter when Brock showed up though that that was funny that was incredible so I, I put that up on a pedestal so uh, this this has become one of the best pay per views they put on PLEs oh yeah uh, that they put on and uh, I think they're really trying to make everyone important but mm-hmm. Money in the Bank I remember they just wanted to turn it into a big five so oh yeah yeah because yeah. you know because yeah I noticed they got rid of all the other ones all the, the... We're not gonna see TLC. We're not gonna see uh, Hell in a Cell. Yeah. All the other gimmick pay per views. So this one being the last one standing, you know, it got some plenty of meat on it still. Just, just that a uh, challenge for any championship shit. Get that out the way. Yeah, please, please cut that out. Get out the way. But talking about PLEs, man, I, I I'm saying this in, in, in honesty. I wouldn't want this to happen because I that that would that would mess stuff up for me. But uh, PLEs might have to get up out of America because <laughs> as, as good as some crowds you might find around Dude, here, shit. pretty much the case so far this year. Like I'm about to, yeah, man. What's the only what the Rumble was in America or WrestleMania? That's really it so far. Yeah, I mean Puerto Rico Mont- technically, but yeah, but I mean Montreal, it's crazy. Um, backlash was. Next level, yeah, you know what I'm saying. They're really um, just going to places they don't ever go for PLE, yeah, yeah. Get that Which out your good. system and let's get some more in Vegas. That's all I'm saying, yeah. I mean, look, look, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want it to happen, but I mean, the, the reaction is, is crazy. Like, I know they say the crowd is like the biggest superstar of it, but I mean, like, this is this is really showing. UK so, crowds I mean, be pissing me off sometimes, though. <laughs> but they funny too like that whole stand up if you hate Roman shit, like that was killing me they called him a tribal wanker right <laughs> but like oh, then man. you have the case with like the women's money in the bank where it's like shut the fuck up yeah yeah they was, they was doing too much right there I hated them Bailey Chance and NXT I really hated them last night it's old man it's old, it's old. all that shit old like y'all could do it one time now that she's a heel 
to get her to kind of get her to pop. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You get her to break character. That that's cool. But every time they go overseas, we, can we, we can stop that. We can stop that now. Tripping, man. So that's our our show this week, two hundred one. Join us again next oh, week. Oh, 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 oh. What's up? What's up? What? What? We, 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 got, we got like take like two minutes to talk about Forbidden Door real quick. Oh, oh I, yeah. got, I got it. I got it. I got to get that off my chest. I forgot about Forbidden Door myself. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, it, it was it was it was crazy. I did that watch it. Though. Well, I'll spray Kenny. Was... Yeah, listen, Y'all I've been one for... still be dragging Kenny on mega matches, but it was solid though. Yeah, yeah. I've been one for saying I'm not on the Kenny bandwagon, and I don't even care that much about Will Ospreay. But goddamn it, when two of them get together, they be on their shit. Yeah, they be on. They really do. It's money. I like, I don't I don't like some of the bumps they was doing because you know. Oh, that right on his head. Right on his head, y'all sure. You wilding, <laughs> you wilding out. But now nah, they could have gone ten more minutes, and I would have still watched it. That that was that was crazy. Yeah, they did a thing. Uh. MJF Tanahashi, that was cool. Yeah. Didn't Tanahashi don't got his knees no more. So that, nah, that wasn't gonna be yeah. nothing crazy. Uh didn't didn't really care for Willow losing. Um nah, but I I figured I figured that's what was going down. You knew CM Punk wasn't losing. CM Punk probably not gonna lose at all in the Owen tournament. Oh no, not at all. Uh, I didn't think. The Fatal 4-Way, I did not expect to care about that match at all when I seen who was in it. But, damn, they got me. After, like, Because they, they started like that, like quick, on Who's the, the gas. Fatal 4? I, I don't think I've seen them. Um, it was Zack Sabre, um, didn't see it. No. Orange Cassidy. Um, who's up to? Orange Cassidy been in his Orange bag Cassidy. all year, though. I know. Um, damn, who's up to this Google? It is. But they they really like they really snapped. And I did I did not think I was gonna care. But yeah, Zach Saber, Shibata, Daniel Garcia, and Cassidy. Mm. Oh yeah, I knew I wasn't gonna watch it because uh I think Orange is probably the only person I cared about in that match. <laughs> And it was only like eleven minutes, but they used up every damn one. I'm gonna check it out then. Uh, I trust your word. Yeah, it was, I, did, it was I did not care for uh, Sonata and Jungle Boy because I don't really give a shit about Jungle Boy. Yeah. And then this man turned heel and cut one of the worst promos I've heard. <laughs> zero I, confidence I, in what he was saying. He got zero confidence in his words. Why should I care as a as a viewer? It, it caught my attention when he did it. Cause I'm sure people was talking about it, but I don't pay attention to it like that. But when I saw him, when I saw him beat down Hook, I'm like, I can get behind that. Cause I don't know why y'all be hyping Hook like that. So this for the pure satisfaction of that, and Taz acting like he gonna do something over on commentary. Like Taz ain't about to do a goddamn thing. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, you got me. You got me this time. Had Jungle Boy out there looking like Hyde from that '70s show. Right. <laughs> Oh, yeah! No confidence in his words, man. I couldn't, I couldn't believe what he was saying. So. And he about to start jacking Christian's whole look. You know he is, man. Just put them back together. Shit, fuck it. If y'all really want to like dig into this with, with with Jungle Boy, this is what y'all need to do. Y'all need to get him a nice smooth leather jacket. Have him cut his hair just like Luke Perry. Like turn him into his father on live TV. Turn him into Luke Perry. That's all you gotta do. He needs his daddy. You really want him to be here? Yeah, that's true too. That that's, apple that's a, all, all the way across the street. <laughs> that's a start, though. That's a start. Yeah. Do that and give him some shades. That's it. Yeah, you keep the shades on. Just, just don't, don't do that thing where you take them off and try to wink. Don't do that again. No, 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 no. That was stupid. That's like one of them promos you used to cut in the mirror when you was fifteen after you took a shower. Right. <laughs> that's what this shit came off to me like. That's why I just couldn't. I couldn't rock with it. So. Uh, mm-hmm. Get, bro. How you how you Luke Perry son and like take some acting classes or something, fam. Like you got the connects, right? I, I would hope so. Shit. Oof. Yeah, yeah we talking about AEW a lot more on here. Yeah, they they got they got something right. They they starting to do something. They just got to stay consistent with it, or yeah, right back to the ghetto. 
True. Plug your socials, Reek. Uh, y'all can find me at Rick Havoc 24 on Instagram and on Twitter. Also, y'all can go find all the past episodes of the Havoc Hour where I talk sports and entertainment on all streaming platforms where you find Young Kings Wrestling, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Spotify, the video versus up on YouTube. Like I said, I'm off this week, so I'm thinking I might shoot this week. I'm thinking I might uh, resurrect it, hey. you know what I'm saying? We, 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 got, we got plenty we can talk about, so I'm going uh, I'm to get to writing. We're going to see what we do this week. Facts, and I am the Thespian TC Fontaine. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at tc.fontaine. Uh, you can follow me on my photography page at what is my photography? <laughs> Slip my mind. Uh, he ain't uh, been using it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, you can follow Young Kings Wrestling everywhere at ykwrestling.com. Uh, if you can, see our tweets follow us at ykwrestling.com before the time being my pack in the air is guess what these peasants few peasants for the time being i know it's apparently temporary Mm-hmm. But God damn it, nobody on Twitter can see their God dang timeline. So Elon Musk, bring that ass. Bring that ass here, boy. God damn, you just do too much, man. You can't get things with money. Nothing. 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 We never should have gave you niggas money. Like, everything was fine. Everything was fine. You had to come in here. Playing on shit. Since shit. I spent $40 billion, I need to do something. Like, what they got to do with us? Just because you made a bad investment, now we got to pay you. What kind of shit do that mean? I just want to read my timeline, bro. Thing is, my timeline was working fine, too. Like, everybody else shit was, like... My, mine was glitching. Mine was glitching for a hot minute. Like, my shit been trash, like, periodically for pretty much the entire year. Like, like the issues everybody was having, not being able to see their timeline, I had that issue for about three months. And I was so happy, and it, it it actually resolved itself the day of WrestleMania. I was so happy. I was like, I get to actually see my timeline during WrestleMania. I was hyped. Mm. Yeah. And then now all the same shit happening. Like, and nobody paying for that shit, bro. Yeah. Must be. Nobody's had to pay for it before. Nobody. Right. I mean, you have you got, you got the losers that pay for it already. Mm. Outside of them, mm. ain't nobody else paying for that shit. You know. Paying for a blue check. Mark. Unless you're important. Like, if you're important, you're a, you know, freelance journalist or, you know, like, I thought about doing, you know, getting it for Young Kings Wrestling, but then I was like, fuck that. I don't feel like spending that money. Yeah. Yeah, y'all are crazy. Ain't no way. Y'all tripping. Stop it. Get some help. That's all I got. Yeah, that really pissed me off. They try to justify that shit to me. Like, man. If you don't get when in reality... Money, he didn't pay extreme his. levels of that's extreme all levels of data is data yeah. scraping and system manipulation. If you don't get your punk ass up out of here, hey, yeah, paper that's cap. totally cap. That means lie. When in reality, they say he didn't pay the cloud bill, mm. so there's only so much, uh, you know, data and shit that, that you can use. It always be so they that. figure that out. So, however long that take, yeah, cost I mean, cutting. I ain't paying the five. Cost cutting initiative. <laughs> I'm not following it. That's the episode title. I ain't paying the five. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks. Until next week. Hey. Said I'll be back to hold you down. I don't want to leave. But we got to go right now. And we uh we went a little bit too longer than we wanted to. It's been like two hours. We out of here. Go! Oh. <laughs>